Dylan Power, who is associate head coach at Moorhead State University in Moorhead, Kentucky. Dylan? He's going to talk about, again, like, like usual, he's going to talk about himself a little bit of the background and why he lied here makes it going. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, let me say, uh, you know, I really do appreciate uh, being invited to campus, uh, being one of the candidates for the next head men's basketball coach. Uh, I think it's just a great honor to just to be in the final four, and I just really do appreciate your time that you have taken with me. Uh, you know, so far it's, it's been a wonderful visit so far, and uh, and I've seen a lot of a lot of great things about the community and about the school. Uh, Again, my name is Dylan Howard. I know a lot of people might look at it and, you know, I've had this all my life. They say Dylan, but it's, it's pronounced Dylan. Uh, originally from, uh, born and raised in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Uh, I'm a huge uh, basketball country. Uh, you know, pretty much once you're born, they throw that basketball in the crib and you're ready to go from there. Uh, went to high school at a high school called Harding High School. Harding High School had one of the real, a real, real good player, uh, and obviously being from the Midwest, and and now I'm at Moorhead State. You know, one of our former great players played at the University of Kentucky. His name was Jim Master, and Jim Master was a real good basketball player. And if any of you are familiar with basketball and the history, he was a real good basketball player for the University of Kentucky. Uh, from there, I was fortunate. I uh, Got a scholarship to play for the University of Alabama Birmingham. Uh, and what attracted me to the University of Alabama Birmingham? I uh, played for a legendary coach, Hall of Famer, uh, Gene Barto. I'm sure a lot of you have heard that name before. Uh, he was the successor to John Wood at UCLA. So I wanted to go to a program and to a school that had success in basketball and where I could really learn the game of basketball. So I was very fortunate to play for such a, a great basketball mind, a great coach. Uh, learned a lot from Coach Barto. I still carry with me a lot of the same philosophies uh, as far as uh, offensively, defensively, how to build a program because that's exactly what he did at UAB. Uh, when he got hired at UAB, it was like 1977, and they had no athletic program, let alone a basketball program, they had no athletic program. So he had to basically build an athletic program and a basketball program from, from scratch. Uh, and, and we were very successful. He was very successful at the beginning. And obviously I got there in 1985, so eight years, nine years of the program being in existence. Uh, we were able to, at one point in time, uh, we had held a string of going to, I think it was eight NCAA tournaments. Uh, and I was part of two NCAA tournament teams at UAB. Uh, and I was also a part of uh, uh, NIT Final Four. So I had great success as a basketball player at UAB. Uh, played guard forward. Now, I know everyone say, well, you're a big man. Uh, I played guard forward at that time. We had some real big people at UAB. Our front line was 6'8", 6'8", 7 one So I was able to play shooting guard and small forward with that big lineup. Um, after UAB, uh, I was fortunate enough, uh, fortunate enough to continue my basketball career, uh, played professional over in Asia, uh, played uh, for a, a company uh, in Taiwan, Taipei, Taiwan. Uh, did that for two years, uh, actually got injured, otherwise I probably would have stayed over there at least maybe eight to ten years. Loved my experience overseas. Uh, one of the things I always tell my players now, if you ever get the opportunity to go outside of the country, go overseas and play basketball, even if it's just for a year, you know, take that opportunity to go experience a different culture, uh, and which it was great for me. Um, from there, got into coaching. Uh, finished up my degree at UAB, uh, got a Bachelor of Science in Criminal Justice, uh, got into coaching. Uh, my first coaching job was at NAIA, uh, University of St. Francis, uh, in Fort Wayne, Indiana. I went back home to start my coaching career. Uh, under a, actually, I was up under a coach 
who actually played at the University of Nebraska uh, back in the day. He played for uh, Coach Danny Knee. Uh, Jeff Reckaway was his name. Uh, so me and Jeff got the St. Francis program going. Uh, first year, only eight wins. Uh, by the time I left, uh, stayed there four years. Uh, we were 31 and six, had the number one team in the nation, NAIA. Uh, went to the NAIA National Tournament, went to the Elite Eight, and also had the National Player of the Year. Um, so I was very fortunate. We were, like I said, we had uh, basically kind of rebuilt that St. Francis program. Uh, from St. Francis, uh, I actually ended up coaching up under Danny Knee after St. Francis. Danny Knee uh, was released by uh, Nebraska and actually got the Robert Morris job in uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And I was up under Danny for one year, uh, learned a lot from Coach Knee, uh, and then I was fortunate enough to get a call to become a, uh, my first head coaching job in college. It was Hardin Simmons University, Abilene, Texas. Um, another rebuilding program. Uh, first couple years, we struggled. I uh, had to basically get my type of players into the program. Uh, and then by year three, year four, uh, we started to progress. Actually ended up winning a conference championship. Uh, started to have what I would consider elite players for at the Division III level, uh, all conference type players. Uh, spent seven years at the University of uh, at Hardin Simmons University. Uh, last four years very successful. Won right at 60% of the games. Uh, out of my last three, out of my last four years had the conference player of the year. Uh, two All Americans. Uh, two academic All Americans also. Also, academically, uh, we were very successful at, at Hart and Simmons academically. Uh, one of the things I, I pride myself on is I want to make sure I recruit the right type of kid, recruit student athletes. That student comes first. So at Hart and Simmons, we were able to raise our team GPA like from 2.6 to a 3.2. Uh, I was able to graduate any player, all the players that went through four years with me, all of them graduated uh, within that four year period. Uh, so we were very successful on and off the court. Uh, after Hardin Simmons, uh, the head coach that I'm up under now, his name is uh, Sean Woods. Some of you might have heard that name before if you follow basketball. Sean Woods played at the University of Kentucky under Rick Pitino. Uh, he was the one, every NCAA tournament you see what they call the big game. Uh, Sean Woods, the, the Duke versus Kentucky game, the 1992 game, got Christian Leitner hitting that famous shot well, right before that. Sean Woods was the point guard, and she's the running one-hand hook. And uh, so that's who, that's who I'm uh, coaching up under right now. But we started at Mississippi Valley State. Once again, another rebuilding program uh, where we had to go in, had to basically try to clean house a little bit, get the type of players that we knew that would be successful at Mississippi Valley State uh, to where uh, we could be successful, won a lot of games, had a lot of conference, uh, all conference players. Uh, uh, then I actually uh, probably, you know, me and Sean, great relationship. He knew I wanted to once again be a head coach. You know, that's that's what I feel as though I'm successful at helping to rebuild programs and building programs. So I took a job uh, for just for one year at North Park University at another Division Three in Chicago. Sean Woods got the job at Moorhead State. I went to Moorhead State to help him uh, kind of build that program again, and uh, that's where I'm currently at now. We've had great success at Moorhead, uh, Moorhead State in Kentucky. Not the Moorhead State that, that you're used to, but the Moorhead State in Kentucky. We've had great success. Uh, this past year, we won 23 games. Uh, played, uh, went all the way to the championship game of the CBI tournament. The CBI is the College Basketball Invitational. It's another postseason tournament that the NCAA kind of helped sponsor uh, just to give teams an opportunity to continue uh, their season. Uh, you know, if you are if you had a successful season, you don't win your regular season championship, or if you don't win your conference tournament, it's just another way of helping your kids to extend their season. Uh, so we were very successful, won 23 games, went to the championship. Championship series was best two out of three, won the first game at our place, 
lost the final two out in Nevada. Um, so that's kind of my background as far as on the basketball side. Uh, married, beautiful wife. Uh, she's from Pittsburgh, big time Steeler fan. Have a daughter, 23 years old. She's also, she's in grad school at uh, Moorhead State. Uh, working for the university also. She actually graduated, her undergrad was at Sanford, a great academic school in Birmingham, Alabama. Ran track for four years under a scholarship. Uh, so that's, that's my family background. Um, when I saw the Wayne State job, when it came open, um, I knew a little bit about Wayne State, not much. Uh, so I wanted to do my research. Uh, wanted to see if it is a place where I could be successful. Um, they've had success in the past, I know that. Uh, this year they struggled a little bit, but I think it's a place where I can be very successful. I think it's a place where you can win a championship. It's gonna be a tough, it's gonna be a tough job. And, and similar to where I've been as far as Mississippi Valley State and Moorhead State, it's still, a, it's still a tough sell because you, you are isolated. But one of the things that I, I, I mentioned in the, uh, in the search committee, with the search committee, it's all about rolling up your sleeves and outworking the next guy. You can get, you can get a high quality player here to win games. Uh, there's, a, there's a ton of basketball players throughout the nation. Uh, and I've been the recruiting coordinator at each stop that I've been and when I've been an assistant. Uh, so I've established a lot of contacts throughout the nation uh, to where even right now I've got people on standby just waiting to see if I'm going to be the next coach of Wayne State to say, Coach Howard, I've got a kid ready to go right now. All right, he's your kid. And that's what basketball is all about. Recruiting, uh, that, that's your lifeblood of any program is recruiting. And it starts with relationships first. Uh, You've got to establish those relationships. Uh, I want to recruit the state of Nebraska. Wherever there are some kids in the state of Nebraska, I want to get there, I want to see them, and I want to try to recruit them to Wayne State. Uh, but my, my goal also is we've got to expand our horizons. We've got to get out there, we've got to recruit nationally. Uh, that means um, recruiting some junior college kids. Uh, that can help us immediately. That means recruiting some Division I transfers because uh, as I look on the Division I transfer list right now, uh, I see, uh, uh, I know, I think Minnesota, Minnesota State Moorhead, they've got a Division I transfer uh, coming in. Uh, I think there was two other schools that I saw on the uh, transfer list uh, within the conference. They've got Division I transfers coming in. So that means that Division I transfer, he's ready to play right away. He's going to help them immediately. Uh, and I guess one of the top players in the league this past year, I think his last name was Davis, came from IPFW. Uh, I think he's at St. Cloud, I believe. I think that's it. But he, he helped them immediately. And that's what you're looking for. You're, you're looking for someone that can come in that can help immediately. Um, one of the things as far as recruiting goes also, I, I want to recruit high character individuals. All right. I don't think, me personally, I don't think you can win with knuckleheads. You just can't. All right. You've got to be able to recruit the type of player that obviously fits your system and fit, fit the school and fit the community. Uh, one of the things I am real big on is being out in the community. I, I, think, that's, I think that's huge. Uh, because it's a, it's a privilege to play college basketball. And in order to make sure that fans and, and the community support you, you've got to support them. You've got to give back to the community, wh wh whatever it is, going out to the elementary school uh, at, at, a, at, a, at a reading program. Or, or one of the things I've done in the past is to, on a Saturday, run a, run a free clinic from like, 9 to 11 or 9 to 12, uh, just to make sure that you're involved in the community in any way possible. Uh, I play an exciting brand of basketball. Uh, I think that's going to get 
fans out to the gym. They're going to want to see the style of play that we're going to bring to the table. It's up-tempo, it's fast, uh, it's relentless. My team will always be in the best condition team in the conference, guaranteed. Uh, we play, I, I have a little, little saying, we play fast and then faster. That's offensively and defensively. Uh, offensively, uh, you adjust offensive philosophy, you adjust to your personnel that you have. Uh, offensively, you gotta be flexible. Uh, but defense, to me, is a constant. Uh, you, you figure out what, your, what type of defense you're gonna play, and then you stick to that defense, and, and you drill that every single day to where it becomes second nature to the players. Uh, so defensively, I'm primarily a man-to-man -man, uh, defensive coach. Uh, offensively, uh, it's, I, I like to run what I call four-out, one-in motion. It's, I guess you could say it's similar to like a, like a dribble-drive motion. Also, I like to exploit mismatches on uh, offense. Uh, I have a philosophy, uh, obviously being from Indiana, and I'm sure all of you are watching the NBA playoffs at Golden State, they've always got shooters. Uh, well, being from Indiana, that's how I grew up. I grew up shooting the basketball and making them. Not just shooting them, but making them. Uh, so, I do a little thing, recruit to shoot. When I go out looking at recruits, you better be able to shoot the ball, you better be able to put the ball in the hole. Simple as that. Uh, and you gotta be fundamentally sound. Uh, I want you to already come in with the, the basics, knowing how to make the right play on the pass, knowing, knowing how to take somebody off the dribble, knowing when to pull up for a jump shot or take it all the way to the hole. So I, I'm big on guys that already understand and know the game. Uh, and I'm big on recruiting players that come from a winning program. I, I want you to already have that instilled in you that, okay, I know what it takes to win a championship because I've won at, you know, at the lower level, at, at the high school level, but it can carry over to the college level. So those are some of the things that I'm looking for in players. Uh, and I think Wayne State, it can be done here at Wayne State. It, it, it really can. That, and like I said, one of the things that attracted me to the job is I, I love a challenge. Uh, I, I want to be, I want to be able to beat Augustana, MSU Moorhead. Uh, I want to be able to beat those compete and beat those top teams. And it, it's going to take a lot of work. And it's not going to happen overnight. Uh, but it can be done. Because I've, like I said, every situation I've been in, it's been a rebuilding situation. Uh, and that's, that's where I feel as though one of my strengths is, is going into a situation, rolling up my sleeves, recruiting the right type of players, and then just getting the job done. So I'm excited as far as the opportunity to be your next head men's basketball coach, and I'm, I'm looking forward to the challenge. Any questions? Coach, with the uh, talent Wayne State has coming back this year, what, what do you see in, in the team where it stands right now? Right now, um, there, there's, there's like, I look at four categories when I, when I, when I start breaking down teams. Uh, one, uh, you've got to get better as far as field goal percentage. Uh, you've got to be able to, and field goal percentage, in, in my opinion, is, is a direct correlation of the shots that you take. Now, I haven't had a chance to really watch any other players yet on film, but I'm very good at breaking down teams just by looking at the stats. And you've got to be able to take better shots. That means putting them in a better situation to make sure they're successful. Uh, in different spots on the court. Uh, I look at defensive field goal percentage. Uh, the team this year, team shot 48% on them, which if it wasn't last in the league, it was close to last in the league. You've got to be able to guard that guy in front of you. Uh, and there's different, different drills that you do every single day to make it repetition. And you've got to have a toughness about yourself in order to defend that defend whatever play they're getting to run and defend that individual. Uh, I look at free throw percentage and free throw attempts. Um, 
I think free throw attempts, I think they came in. Free throw percentage was actually good. I think second or third in the league when I'm talking about conference, uh, which was pretty good. But the attempts were down. So that tells me that they're shooting too many bad shots on the offensive end and not getting to the line enough uh, uh, as far as being aggressive, taking someone off the dribble. And what that does from a free throw standpoint, it gets the other team in foul trouble. And then the last category that I really pay attention to is the rebound category. Rebounding is not about technique, it's about toughness. And you gotta, you gotta have tough guys in order to keep your opponents off the board. Minus, I think it was minus six on the rebounding margin. You gotta be able to block out, you gotta be able to get that defensive rebound, now, since I'm an up-tempo guy, you got to be able to start the break. Uh, I think from just looking at the stats, I think you got a lot of players returning, obviously. Uh, but I think, once again, it's going to take a little while because it's going to be a whole new philosophy, a whole new teaching as far as what I want to instill in them. But I, I see that, that they've, got some, they've got some decent players returning. It's just a matter of getting them in there, getting that individual skill work, and getting that team work done. Yes, sir. What adjustments, transition do you see for yourself going from assistant to a head coach, and also from Division One to Division II? Um, going from an assistant to a head coach, Honestly, that's not going to be a big adjustment because I've been a head coach before. Uh, and right now, even now, my head coach gives me so much responsibility uh, as being the actual the, the associate head coach. I mean, with at the Division I level, uh, us being like a mid-major, sometimes the head coach, especially Sean Woods in the state of Kentucky, he gets called away to different things. Uh, speaking engagements or something. So it's my practice to run. Uh, I, I have all the input as far as when we break down scouting reports, film editing, I pretty much have the final say on what type of schemes we're going to do offensively and defensively. So that's not really going to be a big transition, especially since I've already been a head coach. Uh, now, Division Two. From Division One to Division Two, probably the biggest adjustment for me is going to be the waiting period as far as kids signing. Because let's be honest, every kid wants to be a Division One player. Every kid's talent is not Division One talent. So what you got to do as far as recruiting, you identify them. Say, like for instance, in the summertime. And then you recruit them throughout the whole year. You don't let up. You be relentless. Uh, and then come hopefully April, May, June, even July, now you're able to hopefully sign that kid uh, to come to Wayne State. Uh, that's going to probably be the, I would say with me, probably the biggest adjustment because, like I said, every kid nowadays, they think they're the so that's going to probably be the biggest adjustment. Yes, sir. Hey, Coach, I, uh, I work in the admissions office, and I was just wondering if you could maybe speak a little bit about um, how you've interacted with the admissions offices at some of the previous institutions you've worked with or worked at. Sure. Um, I've always had a great relationship uh, with the admissions. Uh, we consider our admissions people as part of our recruiting team also because we're not going to know everything as far as what the university has to offer as far as the maybe the different type of majors they can go into what it's going to take as far as the different little scholarships that they can possibly apply for to help balance that cost so I've always myself personally I've always had a great relationship with the admissions department uh, you know if I'm if I'm hired uh, that's part of my what I consider my first 30-day plan is to get to know admissions, uh, registrar's office, uh, financial aid.
those three entities are a huge part of our recruiting team. I mean, have to work hand in hand because uh, it's all about hopefully getting that right type of kid that's going to fit the university and the university community and also fit the basketball program. So working with admissions is a huge part of our, uh, basically a huge part of our recruiting team also. Hypothetical question. Yes, sir. Sound like you're a great recruiter. We've had very good results recruiting. Say we've got a kid about 30, 40 miles away from here, Class A school. He's about six foot six, good Division II player. But we've got three other schools: Kearney, Northern is in our league, okay. and Sioux Falls. Bigger communities, okay. more successful programs. His mom and dad want him to come to Wayne State. They love Wayne State. How do you convince that kid to be a part of a rebuilding program and build him and come to a smart community? You've already mentioned half of the battle. If those parents want him to come here, that's half the battle. That, that helps tremendously. But you've got to sell them on style of play. You've got to sell them on Things are going to get better, all right? You got to sell them on if he's talented enough and if he's a competitor, you can come in here and you can compete for a starting, for a starting position immediately. But it's going to be hard work and you got to work for it. Nothing's going to be given to you, but you're going to have that opportunity as a freshman to come in and compete for a starting position. One thing about me when it comes to recruiting and when it comes to just once that team is assembled, I don't care if you're a senior, junior, sophomore, freshman. My job is to win games. My job is to put the best five on the court that's going to help us win the game. If he comes in here, he's talented enough to start as a freshman, he's going to start as a freshman. A lot of programs don't do that. A lot of programs, a lot of coaches say, ah, you got to wait your turn. It ain't your turn yet. You got to make sure you learn the system and go through the ranks. It's all about winning. It's all about putting that best product on the court. And that would be my selling point to him. You come in here, you prove to me that you can start as a freshman. You're good enough to start as a freshman, you will be on that court and you will get some playing time. That would be my selling pitch to him. You like cold weather? <laughs> Fort Wayne, Indiana is similar to this, so I'm, I'm Born and raised in it. <laughs> Y'all might get a little bit more snow though than Fort Wayne. I'm not sure about that though. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. Question? We've won. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We've won one road game in the last two years. <laughs> what does it take? Good teams have to be able to win on the road. What would be your philosophy on getting our team to play better on the road and? win more games? I, I, I think it, it, it starts with, once again, with, without me being in the locker room, without me being the previous coach, I think it starts with, with me personally, preparation. I, I'm big, huge on being prepared for our opponent. I'm big on scouting reports. I'm big on breaking down film, film editing. So going into that game, my team is going to be prepared offensively and defensively. Um, and with me, I mean, it, it, every, every road game is a challenge. Every road game is tough. As you see in the NBA playoffs where they're getting blown out by 30 once they travel on the road. So. Road games are tough, but it's all about preparation. Making sure that your team is prepared for whatever they're going to throw at you. Um, and know, knowing your game plan. Just going in there knowing your game plan and sticking with your game plan. Uh, and sometimes it, it, it's just, uh, and, and I know we, we had, we had a, a discussion because for, for, for a while we were uh, struggling on the road at Moorhead State. And what we had to come to a conclusion was sometimes at the beginning of the game, 
Because a lot of times, sometimes that's where you lose the game as right at the beginning because you got their home crowd going crazy, they're into it. Uh, and we would tell our players, make sure your first couple shots are good shots. Nothing crazy, all right? Let's, let's, let's go with what I call inside out first to make sure we get an inside touch. Make sure we're shooting a high percentage shot first. Just so you know, we can we can calm down because we're probably excited being on the road. Their crowd is into it, and let's try to take their crowd out of the game. So that's I know that's what we had to do, and, and that's part of my philosophy is when we go on the road. Okay, I think we're just uh, out of time right now, so we got to get to that next meeting. So I appreciate everybody coming down, and, and uh, I know Coach is going to talk to a couple of afterwards, but he's going to stay. It might be a couple minutes later, too. So. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. We're here on MyWayNews.com uh, talking with uh, Coach Dylan Howard. Uh, he is uh, the last of the four candidates uh, for the uh, head men's basketball coach position at uh, Wayne State College. Uh, comes to us uh, here today from uh, Moorhead State University in Kentucky. And I don't know if you were reading the, the news release earlier. You might have gotten confused with MSU Moorhead up in Moorhead, uh, Minnesota. Two completely different uh, colleges on a whole lot of levels. Uh, Moorhead State University, a Division One school down in Kentucky, and of course MSU Moorhead. They're, they're one of our opponents up in Minnesota. We don't want to talk about them. So, but uh, Coach, uh, you come here from uh, from Moorhead State, and I know you've uh, got, got really kind of an interesting background. As uh, people who watched the video earlier uh, were listening in, uh, you played for uh, one of the legendary coaches in. in uh, college basketball history, uh, Gene Bartow at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. It uh, really had to be kind of an interesting, I know there's an interesting time in, in uh, the history of college basketball with him developing that program literally out of nothing. Yes, I mean, it was just a great experience to play for a legendary coach, someone that I just, he just knew basketball. He, he taught the fundamentals. He was just one of those guys that when you played for him, you didn't want to let him down. I mean, you played hard every single day, whether it was practice, whether it was the games. He just had, you know, one of those personalities. One, he just had a aura about him that, okay, we need to win for this 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 coach right here. So it was just great playing for him, great experience. And uh, you obviously have played uh, in your coaching career. You've uh, been in a couple of head coaching jobs at the Division Three level. I've also had an opportunity to coach as an assistant at the Division One level. So you kind of kind of bypass the Division Two process uh, here, but uh, uh, what are your your thoughts about uh, taking what you've learned as a head coach at the D three level and an assistant at D one level and, and applying it uh, in a D two uh, situation here at Wayne State? Well, I, I think it's a, a great opportunity and, and a unique opportunity also because with Division One you get you get thirteen full scholarships at Division Three you have no scholarships, but at the Division Two you you have ten scholarships that you can break down and you have to rely also on financial aid and, and the different. Uh, uh, academic scholarships to try to piece together the best possible package. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's almost a combination of both worlds of Division One and Division Three. Uh, but Wayne State, it, it just presents such a great opportunity, uh, not only academically, because it's a great academic school, but also uh, basketball-wise. I, I think it's a sleeping giant. I, I really do. I, I think a coach can come in here and compete with those top two or three teams in the conference, get to the conference tournament, and win it. I, I, I feel that very strong. Uh, Northern Sun Conference has had uh, some success here in recent years. Uh, Augustana, of course, won the national title yes. this past year. Uh, we had um, MSU Moorhead uh, has had very good teams, and, and uh, we've also uh, seen some successful successful teams at uh, Minnesota State and, and Winona State. Uh, how do you how do you think the 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 up-tempo style that you, you like to play, how do you think that, that will uh, transfer here in, in, in the Northern Sun Conference to, to battle against those top teams? Well, I, I think we'll do very, very well against those teams. Uh, you know, we've prided ourselves so far. You know, I was assistant at Mississippi Valley State and assistant uh, associate head coach now at Moorhead State. And what we've been able to do, it's a relentless style, offensively and defensively. You know, a lot of people think of up-tempo that, you know, it, it just starts on the uh, offensive end. But no, defensively, we're picking you up full court. It's full court pressure. Uh, and then the half court, we're pressuring the ball, we're getting after it. So it's a style that, it's hard to prepare for uh, because we'll run different little traps. Uh, 
half court, full court trap. So it's a, it's a style that you can't simulate in practice. And, and I think that's where our strength lies. The, the, the thing that I think of when you're talking about uh, the, the relentless full court pressures, uh, uh, when Arkansas had their success in the, in the mid 90s, they call it, they called it 40 minutes of hell. 40 and, minutes of hell. And I think uh, that that's, uh, that sounds sounds a lot like the, the, that's the kind of style that you want to bring into one stage. Very similar. Mine is just fast and faster. That, that, that's it. That's it. We and, and, and here's the key, though. You have to get players to buy into that system, and, and it starts with conditioning. Like I said, we will be the best conditioned team in this conference because in order to play that way, first of all, you have to play a lot of guys. That's another way that you attract players to your program. I'm going to play 10, 11, 12 guys because you have to play that many guys in order to be successful in that type of system. We're talking with uh, Coach uh, Dylan Howard. Uh, he's the, uh, currently the associate head coach at uh, Moorhead uh, State University down in Kentucky and is, the, of course, the last of the four finalists. Uh, if you've been watching the uh, other three uh, uh, videos that we've had on mywaynews.com, you've seen the other three candidates uh, that uh, have applied for this position as well. And uh, uh, Dylan here on campus uh, this afternoon, uh, the last of the four, and, uh, and uh, the uh, uh, decision for the new head basketball coach will be made sometime next week, and once that uh, information is available, of course, you can catch that uh, right here on mywaynews.com uh, as soon as uh, as soon as that information is released. Uh, coach, uh, best of luck in your in your pursuits, wherever they may take you. And uh, if you're the next coach here, we we look forward to working with you. Thank you so much. I uh, appreciate it. All right, thanks a lot. That'll do it for this edition. Uh, we'll uh, keep you updated on everything that's going on here at uh, the college as far as the new men's basketball coach's position is here on mywaynews.com. This is Mike Carnes. We'll see you later.